second epistle of John. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I have found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we have from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that it, as ye have heard from the beginning, ye shall walk in. And the verse that we're up to today, verse 7, the 30th lesson. For many deceivers are entered into the world. Many. Not a few. Many. Who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Number 30, 29 other lessons on Facebook and uh, other audio pages that I have that you can go to. But the Bible, the Bible says many deceivers have entered the world. And today we're going to look at, in this verse, this is a deceiver. And they're all around. Where can you find a deceiver? I'll tell you the best place you can find one. Look in the yellow pages under churches. And there they are. Go through the religious channels on the television. There they are. Turn to the, the, the Christian radio stations. And there they are. Turn to... Republicans, Republicans, Democrats, politics, there they are. Turn to the classrooms of both the public schools and the colleges, and there they are. Turn to the Holy Bible, Holy Bible, and there they are. To mislead, lead into error, beguiled, cheated, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Misled and led into error, beguiled, cheated. Now, deceiver, 70 verses, 75 times in the Bible. Where deceiver is referenced twice in a verse. Not just once, but twice in a verse. Job 12, 16. Jeremiah 27. Ezekiel 14, 9. 1 Timothy 2, 14. 2 John 1, 7. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, prophets to Israel. The end times and in the the captivity of Judah deceivers showed up in the Old Testament 34 verses and in the New Testament 36 verses deceive 27 verses deceivers 30 excuse me Deceivers, three verses. I'm going to say 30, but three verses. Deceived, 34 verses. Deceiveth, six verses. And deceiver, five verses. That's a lot. So let's get to a Bible definition. Rather than Webster's, nothing wrong with Webster's 1828 dictionary, but, you know, he's a man. Let's go see what the Bible says about deceiving, deceiver, deceives, and all that. 
The first place it shows up, Genesis 27, 12. Took a while. 27 chapters in the first book of the Bible. Took a while to get there. 27 verses. And verse 12. Now, I'm not going to push any particular Bible. King James, that's the only one I'll push. But there's all kinds of King James Bibles out there. I happen to have the Schofield Bible. And again, the notes are man, but it's a King James Bible. And one of the notes that the man puts in in chapter 27 is called the Stolen Blessing. This is where it's time for Isaac to get venison. I'm I'm sorry. I was thinking of the belly. It is lunchtime here. And he wanted venison. I'm sorry for that. She got to stop doing that. He's time to bless his son with that blessing that passes on from the father to the firstborn son. And in order for Isaac to do it, he tells his son, listen, it's going to cost you venison. I mean, it's going to cost you a meal. So, Esau goes out and gets the meal. Gets the preparations, the, the meat, the stuffings, the potatoes, the vegetables, all that. He's got to go out there and get it. It's going to take a while. Rebecca, who just loves both her children, not, has favoritism over one child over the other, as Isaac has favoritism over one child over the other. That, that's really a, a messed up family. Rebecca gets this idea. See, what we're going to do, see, this is October 17th. And in a couple weeks, we're going to have something called Halloween. So what Rebecca says, hey, we'll take Junior, we'll dress him up like Esau. But instead of going out and getting a trick or treat, he's going to bring the trick to his father to get the treat, the blessing. See? Nothing new under the sun, Solomon. So, what is the deceit here? In verse number 12, I said, uh, let's see. We'll start in 6, verse 6, 27-6. And Rebekah spake to Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother. Bring me venison. By the way, just a side note. In America, venison is only deer meat. In the Bible, venison could be any game meat, such as goats or anything. That I may eat and bless thee before the Lord, before my death. Now therefore, my son, Esau, obey my voice according to that which I commanded thee. Now, that's what, that's what Isaac said to Esau. Now, this is what Mama says to her son. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice to that which I would command thee. Go now to the flock. He's not deer. They don't have a flock of deer in the backyard. And fetch me from thence two good kids of goats. So it's not... That deer meat tastes like goat meat. Goats is considered part of venison in the Bible. It's just extra information. I will, I will, Rebecca will, make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man. And I am a smooth man. My father of preadventure will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver. There's the word. And I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. Does this deceiver sound like a good person? That if, if dad catches me as a deceiver, he's not going to give me a blessing, he's going to give me a curse. So the first time that deceive shows up in the Bible, uh, you got a Halloween, you got a, a family that's not right, you got a man who's in love with his belly, 
Mama is out to trick Daddy. Jacob is talking to Mother about his strategy to deceive Daddy. And I know this happens in families today. Calm down, son. I know how to take care of your father. I'll give your father what he wants, and then he'll say yes to me. And you know what the saying is, and let me be clean, I mean, there's two things man wants. He wants food and... Wifey, honey pie, you do that to, to your husband for any reason, including the children, you are deceiving. That's what the Bible says. So she wants to steal Esau's birthright. Theft? Halloween? Boy, this is a great content, isn't it? If Isaac would find out the deceiving scheme, the outcome would be a curse rather than a blessing. Now, let's put ourselves in a courtroom, would you? And you are being convicted of a crime. You are. And you're standing there and there's a jury in the room. Now, let's. you're innocent. Okay? You're innocent. The jury... Let's name some of the characters of the jury, shall we? Jury number one is feed me. That's the foreman. Jury number two is thief. Jury number three is deceiver. Jury number four is curse. These are their names. These are their characters. Their actions. Would you want that as your jury so far? And I haven't gone to the rest of them. But these are the characters that show up with the word deceived that first shows up in your Bible. And there is a rule of the Bible when a word first shows up, the context that surrounds that word becomes the character of that word throughout the whole Bible. Being someone you are not, Esau and Jacob were not the same. We read one guy was hairy and one guy was, was not so hairy. I have a brother. He doesn't have a beard like I have a beard. So for him to impersonate me, he would have to go down and get himself some fur for his face. And John says, a deceiver says, Jesus Christ is not who he really is. And get 20, number 29 lesson from last week. So let me see this. To deceive is to lie. She wanted Jacob to be Esau. So, Christians only, you of the world, you're of the world, you don't know any better, you don't know the Bible, and you're lost, you're going to hell without Jesus Christ. Christians! I'm going to dress my little boy up, and my little girl up in a, 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 a suit, and some kind of, be somebody who I'm not, Now I'm going to send them out for food. Like King Saul dressed himself up to go see the witch and ended up with a meal. You know what the better word for trick or treat is? Christian? To dress up your children like that and have them go knock on the door for free food? Hi, welfare! 
You sit there and complain about people earning welfare, and you send your children for free food at people's doors. What's the difference? I didn't mean to get into Halloween, but we're in the Halloween season, so then this looks like Halloween. All right. Let's go to John 844. John 844. You know, there's two fathers of all the universe. There's God the Father, the capital F, and there's Satan with the small F. You better be full of Father God and failing on Father Satan. He of your father the devil. Ooh, Jesus, what you bad little boy. You offended them. Calling them Satan. You tear up my brains and what would Jesus do? <laughs> and the lust of your father ye will do. Lust. Food. <laughs> Sex, money, fame, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, here we go, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar. Deceive and the father of it. So, my friend, spiritually, Rebecca and Father Satan produced a deceiving lie against Isaac. And there was no sexual context because in Matthew 5 28, Jesus said, Whosoever look upon a woman after his heart to lust after him in his heart, lust has committed adultery. You don't have to be in a physical act. A lie or a deceive, the whole thing was a lie back there in Genesis. Where did that come from? It came from Satan. Do you know what Esau wanted to do to his brother after that? I'll leave you to go back to Genesis 27 and find out how happy Esau was and what he wanted to do his brother. And then go back to John 8.44. I'll leave that study for you, okay? I'm not going to do all the work for you. I'm going to make you do some work, too, if you really love the Lord. And as you're watching this video, if you don't go back and search the work, you're going to have to give account why you didn't do it. See, I'm a wonderful guy. I leave you all alibis at, out the door. You can't say I never knew. The alibi is gone. I want you to go study the word and show thyself a food on the God. Okay? So, the movie. Where did you get movie from? The television. <laughs> the play, the screenplay. Actors or actresses say that they are someone that they are not. Esau, I mean, excuse me, Jacob's going to step in the picture of Genesis 27. Hi, Dad! Hi, son. Who are you? Oh, yeah. I'm Esau. Liar. And that is your television in your movies. This guy named Bob steps in the scene, and here he is, and I'm Joe. No, you're not. And remember we talked about, and we've been talking about, and and in this lesson about love go back listen watch me love no, I'm just I love you I love you I love Lucy and they don't really mean it that is a deceiver. You are watching deceivers on the screen. Or on the stage, wherever you go.
And that takes place in Genesis 27. There is somebody who's saying he is, he isn't. I'm Esau. No, you're not. You're Jacob. I'm a hunter. No, you're not. You are a plains man and, and you dwell in tents. Probably a chef from what we know. Something like that. Because he was making a bean stew and he was, he was accompanying his, the house and doing things. He wasn't a hunter. So he changed his career. Hi, I'm an actor. Sign your name. Hi, in this movie, I'm a race car driver. I thought you were an actor. And do you know what the big H word is here? Hypocrite. I know many hypocrites in the church, so I don't go to church. Do you watch TV? Yes, I watch TV. You're a hypocrite right there because there's a bunch of hypocrites on the screen. Let's give them a D word now. Ready? Deceiver. I'm going to go pay money to a movie and watch a guy go in that movie for two hours and proclaim what he's not and who he's not. That's a deceiver. Get back. Remember the lie of our church age was telling itself in Revelation 3? Let's go to Revelation 3. You know our church age is lying? Step in the pulpits. You'll find out. Watch the pulpits. Here is the lie that the church age is living in. Because thou sayest, Revelation 3.17... This is the church age, glad to see you. I am rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched. See, the church says, I'm rich, I've got great goods, I have no need of nothing. And God says, knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. God says, you're a liar. <gasps> Just like he told those Pharisees back there. You are of your father, the Satan, a liar. When was the last time your, your pastor from the pulpit pointed his finger at the congregation and said, Some of you are liars. You need that kind of preaching. Some of you are adulterers. Some of you out there are... Thieves. Some of you out there are liars. Some of you are out there coveting. Some of you out there are not honoring your parents. Some of you are not even worshiping God. You're worshiping idols. You need that preacher to point the fingers at you. Or he may be deceiving you. You better not pout. You better not cry. I'm telling you why. Who's coming to town in your life? In my family, it's Jesus Christ. Or are you deceiving your children with Satan claws? Here's, here's what you do. You want to know about that deceiver, Santa? Have the real Santa, the real one, up in the North Pole, who's married to Mrs. Claus, have him take a selfie of himself and put it over the internet. The real one, not the fan, not the phony one. They're claimed to be who they are not. This church age is hypocrites, according to Revelation 3. I'm not talking to the late, to the, to the lost. I'm talking to the Christians. Or those who profane to be Christians. Profane. You know, I said that. I didn't, I didn't mix up my mouth. I said profane. I meant that. Some of you are rotten Christians. Some of you profane to be Christians and you're not. That's a deceiver. That's a liar. Aren't we having fun with this one today? Isn't this great? 
Even the Baptists have come out with Baptist movies. You want me to shut up? And in the movie, for example, Fred the deacon of the church is an auto mechanic. You're a Christian and, and your car breaks down. You can go to your deacon Fred and say, can you look at this car? And he'll probably help you out. Amen. Glory to God. And say, you know what? I'll just charge you for parts because I know you can't afford it. What you can give me extra, I'll accept. We're in the church. We're brethren. Okay? Does that sound great? Isn't that kind of deacon that you'd be great for your church? He loves the Lord and he's helping the people and takes care of the pastor's car and takes care of the church van or the bus, whatever you have. That's a wonderful... What could be wrong with Fred? Well, see, Fred's church makes a movie. Okay? Now, Fred becomes David, the giant slayer. Fred is now, in the eyes of God, a liar. Because Fred ain't David. He's Fred. He ain't a dra dra oh, dragon. He ain't a giant slayer. He's a auto mechanic. He's not a shepherd. He fixes cars. He's Gentile. He ain't Jewish. But we want to make a movie about David and his life. And you can't. You cannot make a movie about the Bible because the people in the Bible are dead. You cannot make a movie about Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ ain't going to come down from the right hand of the Father to come down here to make a stupid movie about his life which you can't make in the first place. Imagine a Baptist church going to make a movie about Jesus and having someone come up and say, I'm Jesus and you are a sinner when the Bible says that Jesus is sinless. The movies are hip hypocrisy. They are deceiving. And there's another movie coming out now about the tribulation period, and it's a deceit. It's a lie. It ain't from the Bible. And when you make a movie about Jesus on the cross, and 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 the Bible says you couldn't even recognize him, and you look at that image that's posted over the internet, and say, "Hey, that looks like a man." The Bible says you couldn't even tell what he looked like. Christian movies are deceiving. I'm sorry what your intent is. They are deceiving. When a person on the screen changes their name, changes their occupation, and changes their clothes. You are not who you are on the movies. That comes from Satan, John 8, 44. That comes from the Lion Church Age. Do you know what Philadelphia came out with? They came out with the King James Bible. Do you know what the Bible says about movies? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Not by flicks, not by screens, not by film. The Bible says, go ye in all the world and preach to God. It doesn't say go ye and make movies. Actors, actresses, Baptists, or not, saved or lost, are hypocrites. And that's it. There's no if and there is no debating with me about this subject. That movie you are defending right now, what is the character's name on that movie? And then wait for the at the end of the movie, sit down for the credits, watch the credits. And when it says that actor, the, the name of the person on the screen, then tell me who the actor was that played that, and you got two different names. Deceivers. And then you will come up and read in the newspaper, Jesus Christ is in Texas, 
with a with a bunch of people, and they were killed by their. Well, oh, that guy's a wacko. That guy's from Nay. That guy. Who does he think he is to call himself Jesus? Who do you think you are to be watching a screen in a movie if somebody proclaims who they are and they're not, and then you don't get upset with them? You give them more money and you buy their piece, their posters, and you buy their 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 tapes and all that. We are in a deceived church age, period. And period. And when you have these Christian films that come supposedly from the Bible, it can't. You can't have a, a movie about David. David's dead. You're going to resurrect him for the charge people five bucks or whatever you charge them today? Well, we're going to do a movie about Peter. You don't even know. You, you're going to do a book. You're going to do a life story on Peter. On what? Uh, five books? Uh, seven with first and second Peter. And he doesn't even talk about himself that much. What are you going to do when it comes to Peter's life about his mother-in-law? They walk into the bill. Hi, mother-in-law. You don't even know what her name was. You see, why are you getting all set with this? Because Christians are being prolonged away from God on this crap. They are believing something they're not to believe. They are leaving their Bible for film. They are leaving God's worship of hands to this junk they call praise and they call contemporary. And I've been in a church where the pastor can't even recognize he's got contemporary music in the pulpit and then he, uh, all the people singing there in the choir and all that and he gets in the pulpit and says, we're not going to have contemporary music here. Yes, you got it. You're blind. Imagine a pastor getting up in the pulpit and preaching about lies and a Saturday night movie in the church. We hope we're going to see this. Anybody sign up and sign up sheet and all that. And we're going to go watch a, a, a thing about a bunch of liars who proclaim who they're not. And then get up next Sunday morning and preach about hypocrisy. You ready for another one? You ready for another movie in the Bible? I'll show you where it's wrong. 1 Samuel 28. 1 Samuel 28. You people have got to wake up. Like when I was first saved, I, I, there were those movies around, and you know they're going to defeat Satan. I'm just checking to see what to ourselves what we can do. We'll go as far as we can. We can stop. We stop. I'm not in a rush. But First Samuel 28:12. I want to read this whole chapter. Because Halloween's coming up, and there's a new Christian movie out there. So let's read. 1 Samuel 28, And it came to pass, in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare, to fight with Israel. And Achish said unto David, Know surely that thou shalt go out with me to battle, and thy men. And David said to Achish, Surely thou shalt know that thy servant can do. And Achish said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of my head forever. Alright, here is a type of Jesus Christ. There's a battle coming. You know, here's the guy in the white horse. Now, let's jump down to 4, verse 4. Now, that will pick up the whole chapter. I said the whole chapter, verse number, where do we leave off? Verse 3. Now, Samuel was dead. He was a prophet in, in Saul's time. Highly respected man. Who God worked through. 
And all Israel had laminated, laminated, lamented, they didn't laminate him, sorry, and buried him in Ramah, even his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits, wizardry, wick, wickedness, wizards, um, witches. Um, I can think of some other movies and books out there that Christians are involved with today, sorcery and all that. Saul got rid of them. And the wizards of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunuman. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gebuah. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid. He didn't fear the Lord. He feared the man. And his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired the Lord, the Lord answered him not. Neither by dreams, nor by Urim, or, nor by the prophets. Saul couldn't get a connection to God. He couldn't get his prayer answered. He couldn't get an answer. Okay? Now. And then Saul unto his servant, seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit. So you just put him you just put him away. You just violated your own law. He's breaking his own law. That I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit in indoor. How do they know that? They must have been going to see her too. Check out Leviticus 19.31 and Deuteronomy 18.10. And Saul disguised himself. There's your Halloween costume. He dressed up. Jacob dressed up. Actors and actresses dress up. Christians from church dress up to do their movies about the Bible. Disguise is another word for lie and deceiver to make yourself look like who you're not. Uh -oh. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. When do you go out trick-or-treating? I wonder. Tree, um, night? you got to obey the Bible. When do you go to the movies? Night. When are the movies played? On television? Night. And he said, I pray thee. Oh, let's be religious. Let's be religious like David in the movie. Or in a movie, you got to have, you know, the, the priest there with his collar on back. And, you know, we got to have a little God in the movies. Sucker those who, who believe that junk. Divine unto me the familiar spirit, and bring him up, whom I shall name unto thee. Call him for the dead. Knock on wood. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul has done. He's passed laws. How he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and wizards. Wizards. Is there a proper movie and book series about wizards that's in the church? I don't know. Must be. And bring him up. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to verse. Out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life, a trap to cause me to die? He said, You know what she's saying to Saul? You're part of Vice Squad. And what you're doing is you're here to catch me. You want you got Mark money. You probably got a camera over there. And and soon as soon as soon as we make the deal, the cops are gonna come busting in and handcuff me and and bring me off to the death penalty. In America, they bring you off to jail and you get paid for the rest of your life for medicals and stuff like that. But here to die. Saul had the death penalty for wizards 
and people who brought up familiar spirits. And uh, this, I'm going to die if this happens, she says. And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. All right, let's jump ahead. I know I wanted to read this the whole chapter, but I got five minutes left. Um, verse 14, he said unto her, What form is he? She said, As an old man cometh up, he covers him, he, co he is covered with a mantle. And so perceived that it was Samuel. Now jump over here. It said that verse 3, now Samuel was dead. Got that? Samuel's dead. He perceived that it was Samuel, verse 14, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself before the dead. What are some of the decorations for Halloween? Ghosts, skeleton, dead people. Haunting houses, dead people. Let's go more. Uh, verse 22. Now therefore I pray thee, hearken thou also unto the voice of thy handmaid. And let me set a morsel of bread before thee, and eat, that thou mayest have strength when thou goest on thy way. But he refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants together with the woman compelled him, and he hearkened unto their voice. He, he, what? So he rose from the earth, sat upon the bed, and the woman had a fat calf veal in the house. She hasted, killed it, took flour, kneaded it, and did bake unleavened bread thereof. And she brought it, the food, before Saul, and his service, and they did eat. There's their treat. There's the costume. There is night. There's worshiping dead. And there's the treat. That is just interesting. Do you know what the Bible says? That God says about Saul in this event? Because he saw a familiar spirit. Therefore God had left him. King Saul. And you read the chapter yourself. We, we run it out of time. It's a classic, classic Halloween night. Dress up. Goes to which he's dealing with the dead. And tricks and ends up with a tree. Veal. Our calendars are so marked with so many lies called holidays. Many of the Christian holidays are not Christian. They are a lie. Halloween. Hallow. Let me give you a clue. Hallow be thy name. Holy weenies. How does Saul deceive here this woman? He pretends to be someone who he's not. He disguises himself. There is your movies. And we may pick this up again. We really got far. But we got more to look at with deceiving, Lord willing, next time. And we've only touched the iceberg. We're going to take our time. But I'm going to conclude with one fact of the Bible. And you can't debate it. You can't read from Genesis to Revelation and debate this fact. Christian movies are lies. Now let me state the lie. You are not who you are in that movie. Because if you are not who you are, why would you have credits? All right, you may have cr credits for the cameraman, the guy who does the sound system and the music and all that, and the dollies, whatever those things are, and the cranes, and you know, and the person that did the costumes. And so, okay, 
give them the credit due there. That's a lot of work. Painting and, and, and. But what about the credits when it says Fred is Tom Jones and Sarah was Mary Livingston and the neighbor was Ed Thompson and whatever, whatever. I'm just making up names, making up things. That's wrong. Now, the intention is to be a witness, but it's still a lie, and you can't call the lie the truth just so you can say we can get the gospel out. You think God's going to honor that? You think God will bless a lie? You're in a studio in California, Montana, or Canada, or wherever, and you're going to proclaim you're in Jerusalem. Or to see a gallery. Who on earth could even match to play Jesus Christ in a movie? When Jesus says, and I'm not going to quote this right, but he said, who convinces me of sin? When the Bible says, as far as us humans, all have sinned. There is none righteous. No, not one. And you're going to find somebody to play Jesus? He might be looking at Mary in a movie like, woohoo, that's a hot chick. Adultery. <laughs> See what I mean? You could be having someone play Peter in the movie, and, and he's thinking in his head, I should be Jesus. Coveting. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Imagine if you're going to have a movie and Peter is talking to Jesus in the movie. And, and you know, Peter's the plumber and Jesus is, is uh, I'm the pastor of the church. Now imagine these words. Now listen to me, Christians. Imagine these words. A pretend Peter, like the Pope, a pretend Peter talking to a pretend Jesus, and he says what the Bible says to the pretend Jesus. Thou art the Christ. Now if that is not blasphemy, what is? Imagine a pretend Jesus who's not even saved. Let's say it's a Hollywood movie. Doesn't know Jesus Christ as his Savior. He, he's going to burn in hell unless he gets right with God and repents and confesses his sin to the Savior, Jesus, the real one. Now pretend a lost man pretends to be Jesus Christ speaking as the Bible speaks to the Jews and saying, I am. And imagine Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment talking to the phony Jesus saying, no, you're not. But didn't I play Jesus? Didn't I copy the things you do? Depart from me. I never knew you. Huh? You think I'm lying now? You think I, I'm full of hot air? You can't have a movie about Jesus because no one is as holy as Jesus. But Jesus himself. And I'm looking for here. Oh man, I don't I know where this is. Pity on me, I should. Pity on me, I should. Oh, here we go. I got it. Thank you, Lord. Let me find the place I'm exactly looking for. We're running out of time. No, this is not the one I'm looking for. There, there's a place in the Bible. I'm looking at where you separate the sheep and the goats. That's, that's not what I thought it would say. There are people who say, didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we work amongst you? Didn't we? Didn't we? Didn't we? And Jesus says, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you.
It is blasphemy to have someone proclaim someone to be like Peter or James or John or Paul or Jonah or David or Solomon or Adam or Noah. That is their own characteristics. I'm running out of time, but I want to get this point. They are not who they are. It's a lie. And they're lying to you as Christians proclaiming who they are not. You're not going to get this. You won't get this because you're stuck on Satan's lie. And the credits prove to the fact that it is a lie because the two names don't match. And we'll get into this next time more as we have more scriptures. Sorry, I had to sneeze. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you got to get this. A man that calls himself by another man or woman and is not. That is a lie. And God does not bless lies. He doesn't. He can't. God is inopportune to lie. He can never lie. He will not lie. John 8, 44. Go back and read that before the next time we meet.